How's it going guys? Chris back here with another episode of Brawl. Today we'll be playing Kazmina and looks like we are actually up against Tandrix Qua Qu Quandrix? Um, yeah, we're up against the guild leader. We will show him that we are not um, we're not pushovers. Kazmina is gonna she's gonna be in charge someday. She will lead the Quandrix into the future. Just have to get rid of this pesky dragon first. So we're gonna once upon a time. Technically I should have once upon a time at the beginning of my second turn. After I put down my land drop, but Eh, we jumped the gun a bit. Doesn't matter too much. We got what we wanted out of it. So we're gonna put down a Quandrix apprentice. Right now we are the ones repping the guild the most. Pride in our alma mater, as to so to speak, as so to speak, that is a phrase of words, but I don't think it's cohesive or coherent. So the spirit attacks in, it becomes a 2-3. We can attack for 2-2. Two, two. We're going to beanstalk giant here to get another land out of the deck. Look at the top cards, get another land out of the deck. Quandrix has some really fun mechanics. Um, they do seem a bit familiar. A bit familiar, but um, hey, I've always been down for some blue green action. So they make a 4 4 now. Sadly, one of our Quandrix activations, or maybe it was our. Um, I think it was our Quandrix activation, but it may have been our uh, Once Upon a Time. Put our Ugin to the bottom, which is basically the only board wipe in this deck. So we Migration Pass here. Migration Pass gets the most amount of lands out of our deck. We want lands, basically. That's what we want. So this is turn 4 or 5, and we are already... We'll be on 8 mana next turn. Pretty good. Our opponent has been a little slow, to be honest. They're also a green-blue deck. They probably have a lot of ramp in their deck as well. We've just hit ours first. The Dragon Scale Elite comes down. We're going to see what we draw here. Guess our deck got shuffled. Yeah, it did get shuffled with the Migration Path, didn't it? Ugin comes down. He minus twos. That gets rid of the board, so we don't have to worry about dying. Our Quandrix Guild Mage has done his duty for the continuation of our game plan, so he may rest in peace in the exile zone. Opponent is looking at Ugin, thinking why is this card still in standard. They put down their Fertilid, and then they immediately start trying to crack in their Fertilid because they know that Ugin would just love to bolt that thing to death. So they prevent us from having that option. That's fine. Who can, can bolt their face? We draw a land. We actually get our Vorinclex, which means we can put down our Kazmina, which means we can scry with her. Plus two actually becomes plus four with Vorinclex out. Same goes for Ugin. So, thanks to a series of lucky top decks, I think the founder is about to be unseated because can't see him getting past all of this. So, we use Kazmina to make a 10-10. We bolt the badger. Similar to the bird, but a little different. We turn Timber Symbiote to try to end this game as quickly as possible. Our opponent re rewinds it, which if we had played our land from hand before this, we could have actually countered the remand. Rewind. Not remand. Remand is two mana and doesn't fully counter a spell. Instead we get down our Cosima. 
She's really good in this deck. We swing in for six. They are down to six. Their options are limited. They are short on time. They play their dragon. I politely ask them with my pointer if they'll double the counters on my fractal. Sadly, I don't know if that was an option or if they just declined, but we did win in the end. And so we're going to have a game two this episode. For some reason, all these Brawl episodes that are newer have had game twos because we end the game in the first four to five minutes of the game. So Kazmina will get a second chance to shine. Let's see if she can take down an even greater opponent than the founder of her college. Kogla will make a decent, um, decent substitute in that regard. Unfortunately for... Well, we're gonna keep this hand. It's a little land heavy, but we have a way to get land on the battlefield other than our slow process of doing it turn by turn, so I can't complain too much. Get down our little 2-1. She can tap to put a land on the battlefield, and then tap four to draw two cards once we have eight lands on the battlefield. She'll do one la one draw before you have eight lands on the battlefield. Quantum just can be a bit complicated sometimes. They get down a bear. It's a 3-4 because there are a bunch of snow lands on the field. We opt to... Here I was thinking about blocking and then putting a land into the battlefield and then getting down our other creature, but... I think... In the end, something just didn't sit right with me about making a little science girl fight a bear. So we just end up tapping her to put a land on the battlefield. She can live another day. We're not heartless here. We try to be, but sadly we fail the test several times. We also could have countered that if we hadn't decided to put in the land during combat, which was a little silly of us, but what can you do? We put in a land. Pass to our opponent. We can put in another land. We're thinking about what our appropriate line of play there was. Because we could have uh, foretold Elder's Epiphany. To make it six mana, which would have left us with one mana left over, but we really couldn't have done anything with that one mana, so we opt to be fancy and put in the land during our opponent's turn. It's been fun doing that. Originally, she was the commander of this deck, but I decided I wanted to put in some Born Collection shenanigans because there's that. There's basically a two mana blue green spell that is um it's Quandrix from the new set. That if you can get to eight mana, have it in hand and Vornclex, you can make two Vornclexes because it makes a copy of a creature that you're casting and the copy isn't legendary. And with two Vornclex on the battlefield, if you can cast Kazmina, you can make some stupidly big tokens. Like, Kazmina comes down with six counters. If you immediately remove the six counters, you can make a 24-24. So we go for the extra turn here. Maybe we can draw something that'll save us. We draw a draw spell. A draw spell is not going to save us, but... We do like drawing cards here, so we might as well do it. Let's say I got this card in draft. I think you guys saw the video where that happened, and it's actually a lot more useful than I thought it would be. It's not instant speed, so you can't do it during your opponent's turn, but the math card draws fun. It is. Our opponent continues to play some mana dorks. They have a big monkey that they can attack us with. And a 4-4. Our plan is just to block out the monkey with a chump blocking bird. And then try to double our power and win that way.
So right now we have nine mana. Next turn we can double the power of something four times. So if we double a two power creature, we'll get four. Then we'll double that, we'll get eight. Then we'll double that, we'll get 16. Then we'll double that, we'll get 32. That would be really cool. But I should probably refine this deck a little bit, add some trample on enablers, because we're really good at getting to big, big creatures. We're just not that great at, um, not that great at doing something that I don't recall. What was the something we were doing? Ah, uh, we're not that good at actually hitting our opponent because we don't have trample. Or, trample, yeah, that's right. It's weird to forget something you're saying right in the middle of it, but it happens sometimes. It does. So I live with these things. Our bird dies. It's very sad. I was kind of hoping we could keep that bird. We could have doubled it enough. We could have went in for the kill, but... Sadly, our board gets wiped here because if we don't block, we die. We don't really have anything in hand that's going to keep us alive either. Draw land. We end up putting down a tin tin with one of the new fractal cards. It would have been better if we could have got a Vorin Clex out first, but... Then we decide to opt into a Planeswalker. Teferi Master of Time seems like a good choice. We can start looting towards something that will hopefully keep us alive. And we can also blank the biggest attacker, whatever that will be. Moving right along. Blessings of Frost come down. They're going to distribute some counters. We'll wait till it resolves to see what we're going to blink. What we're going to phase out. Because we're not really blinking it. And then a chariot comes down too. Being so low on cards, they seem to have a lot of good things. Slightly worrying, to be honest. But the monkey's down. The monkey disappeared first because we didn't want the, um... Whatchamacallit we'll to happen. So we're deciding what to block here. We decided to block the 4-4. Four four. Biggest creature. Prevents the most damage. We have a Tintin. That's our sole amulet of pride here. So, we do what we can with it. Now in my hand I'd have to decide between doing the right play or doing the fun play. Like the right play is trying to find some way to survive. Which would be ideal for us. The fun play would be to double the power of that fractal four times. Which I almost do, but then I realize it's just going to get blocked by a squirrel. And because the doubling spell is an instant speed, we can't go, gosh, yeah, I have a 20, 40, 80, 160 power creature. Although I regret that decision strongly because we don't end up finding a way to survive, so. Would have been cooler to see a 160, 160 creature. The green horde bears down upon us. A spider joins the fray. We draw a card just to show that we can. We drew the golden ratio, which is a cool card in this deck in particular. They play a bunch more stuff. And our days are numbered. They get the chariot up and running. Swing in with everything and we die. I'd like to thank you guys all for watching and hope you enjoyed it. 
If you liked, remember to leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching, and goodbye once again, as our fractals slowly take the brunt of our death. Negative 9, how sad. Adios, amigos.